act differently for the anhydrous or liquid than it would be for the granular. And we actually do not want that, so typically that is not selected. Single section. In this area, we have to tell it what portion of this machine is a single section drill. So currently with the Borgo product offering, we really only have section control on the anhydrous or liquid. So in this case, the first four tanks should be selected under single section because the granular will be one section control. Then tank five would be deselected because that is the tank that is running under the six sections. Balanced mode is not used in our system. Um, that is available for different systems in other parts of the world. So the sections tab is all, all set up for us. Let's go to the cedar tab. On the left, tanks on. So you can individually turn tank one, two, three, four, or five on. Um, a typical case where you would use this rather than that grouping option that we discussed earlier is if you were not using the 15 bushel compartment number two on a 6450 to add to your uh, configuration when you are seeding something such as peas or wheat you could just simply deselect tank two and it just ignores it all together. Um, what that does is removes any chance of false alarms or any warnings that it is not turned on because that is not the case. <laughs> is it still good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. The tanks on menu portion of this screen can be used to individually turn off or ignore certain tanks. So if we're not grouping a tank to another tank, but we are not using it to meter product at this time, we can simply deselect tank two in this case then it's going to ignore tank two. You can see it in the background here. It is no longer available. If you select it, it brings it back up. Common case for that is if you weren't going to use the 15 bushel small compartment on a 6450, quite often for canola or inoculant, if you went to seed wheat and you didn't want to use that capacity, you can just simply ignore it by deselecting tank two. For the case today, I'm going to leave everything on. Under machine here, total width. If we are using sections, as indicated by these six green bubbles, when we enter this, it's going to say enter width through the sections options. If we were not using any sections, again, as shown earlier, this is where we enter a simple drill width. Under the cedar tab, we have to tell it which tanks are doing what. Um, essentially, this software is quite capable of configuring this tank any way that we want. But a classic case here, tank one, two, three, and four, all should be set at the granular mode. Tank five, in this case, can be NH3 or liquid. For most common cases, NH3 is our typical tank 5. We'll go with that today. So the cedar tab is complete. The fans tab. This also brings some of the menus that we had access to on the main screen earlier. Fan 1 or 2, sensing or not sensing, based on whether it's selected in the box. If you have two fans, but on a certain day you're only running the one, you're going to want to deselect the second fan so that you don't get alarms and warnings that it is not turning at the appropriate speed. When you go to use it again, just select it again and all the options are available for fan two. 
pressure sense. Again, that was an option. Typically, the, those are not going to be selected um, unless you have the sensor on the air kit system. Fan alarms, high RPM and low RPM values. Again, to know which one you're setting, look down here. In this case right now, we're looking at fan one. So you would be changing the fan alarms for fan one. So if I enter 5200, that means it's going to give me a high speed fan warning at 5200 RPM or higher. The low RPM, I want to run it at 2500 as a minimum. So that means if it drops below 2500, it's going to warn you. Now again, to set the fan two parameters, just touch on the fan two bubble and you get new input values there. Tank one tab. These will typically just be accessed one time. And um, again, if it was a factory built unit and factory configured, these will all be done for you. In the granular options, it asks you what metering auger is uh, installed in that tank. Your three options are a single flight, double flight, or high output. The controlling software has to know which metering auger is in the appropriate tank as to which product list to select from. Now, one of the advantages of the Topcon controller is all of the um, transmission setting data is actually built into the software. So if this software knows what metering auger is in there, all you have to do is tell it the rate that you want and it'll automatically set the transmission for you. So in this case, tank one has a single flight auger in it. The actuator calibration, we have two options, either control to rate or preset extension. And control the rate is just as it says, um, what it's gonna do is when we calibrate, it's going to do whatever possible to calibrate for the selected rate on preset rate one as discussed earlier. If we went to preset extension, we can use that if we wanna use the old transmission data books and pick a value out of a chart to set the transmission at for a certain rate that we're gonna do that day. To set the transmission at a certain value, calibration setting in this case is sitting at 40 right now. If we wanted to go to 50, we enter 50. And when we go into calibrate, it's gonna automatically put that actuator for tank one at 50 for the purpose of the calibration. Under that, the tank clutch checkbox should always be selected um, on the X20 option configured Borgo air seaters. The auxiliary clutches are standard equipment for this purpose. So please make sure that that is selected. Quick tank setup is a way to set up product for this appropriate tank. Number, tank number one. Um, this is a kind of a, a backdoor access to this device. What we will do is I'll show you the more appropriate place to set that product up. Tank two, granular options. The metering auger in this case, this is a, a small 15 bushel tank on a 6450. It's typically always going to have a double flight auger in it. Actuator calibration is all the same as, as the tank one as described earlier. And we are typically going to always want to leave it on control to rate. And again, tank clutch should always be checked. Tank three, again, smaller compartment, double flight auger. Just to make sure that you know which auger is in each tank, you should always look at the end of the metering auger on the non-driven side, and it will be stamped the appropriate number, either a 1R, a 2R, or an HO, to match single flight as a 1R, double flight as a 2R, HO as the high output. Tank four, 
This one is a larger compartment, typically going to be a single flight or a high output. And again, we should have it at control to rate. Now if we jump over to tank 5, this one is to configure to match your liquid or anhydrous system. So for the liquid anhydrous control options, uh, controller type, regulator valve or a proportional valve, you're going to have to know what type of control system you have. Typically a anhydrous system is going to be a regulator type, so have that selected. Over on the right, again, pressure options, typically an option, especially on the anhydrous systems. So if you do not have any of that, do not select that box, and then it will ignore any higher low pressure alarms. Controller settings. This is where we tell it what brand or type of controller we have. Um, regulator valve is commonly supplied by all of these manufacturers and if it is not in the list as a Microtrack, Dickey, John or Raven you can select a standard and what that is is a standard 12 volt system so any uh, valve signals are 12 volt and any flow meter signals are 12 volt. If you have one of the three main brands that are listed below when you select them it actually selects the appropriate um, controller fine-tuning settings over on the right here for those brands. So you notice if you change brands, it's going to change where those settings are at. Reverse valve direction. What that does is if it's selected, all it does is switch the polarity of the valve signal. So if, for instance, when you switch the tank 5 switch on, and it essentially just turns the valve off. Obviously the signal is backwards for your existing valve. That is a quick way to change it so that you don't have to make any modifications to wiring. Close valve if tank off. That should be selected if you have a single control valve system such as a Raven fast valve where the control and the shutoff is done by all one valve and that tells it that that valve should go all the way closed if the signal is to turn that tank off. Now relay on when tank off. Certain anhydrous systems will have two valve systems and one of them will actually require power to close the valve. So if that's the case, relay on when tank off should be selected and that provides power to keep the valve closed. If you are unsure of any of these settings, you should always have a helper watch any of the valve movement before activating the anhydrous product as it is a dangerous product to deal with when you are not sure of the controller reactions. Sensitivity can either be set at standard or reduced. Um, typically you're going to start at standard. If there is for some reason it's overreacting or unstable, try the reduced setting and uh, you can watch the to make sure that the controller is holding the rates properly. Again these four different settings on the right hand side of this window are for fine tuning. Um, typically, you're going to have information provided with your valves, either Raven, Dickie John, Mike Track, or other, to tell you where you should start. Topcon has done some research, and typically the default settings under each are a very good starting point, and these are used to fine tune the valve. For more detailed information as to what uh, parameters should be changed for what situation you should refer to the operator's manual of your anhydrous con uh, valves monitors. So we're just going to cancel out of this. Nozzles. This is always a single digit value 
um, in the Borgo system, we are going to use one nozzle. So basically, if you have one flow meter, you have one nozzle. So just enter one, hit enter, and that should take care of initial settings for your tank five, which is NH3 or liquid setup. Let's jump to the setup tab. Now this is a place where you can change that wheel factor. If for some reason um, the ground speed is not as accurate as you would like, you might have a alternate tire pressure running from the factory's recommended setting or uh, extreme conditions where the compaction is, is differing from normal. You can calibrate this wheel factor. You can manually enter it. If you have a, a more appropriate number that you are sure of, you can just enter that in using the, the calculator pad. But typically what we'll do is we'll calibrate that number. And what you do is you set a distance in the field. And typically you want to do at least 400 feet in the field to be an accurate number. And so then what we do is tell it, we're going to do a test of 400 feet. And when it, you run in that 400 foot distance, what you're going to do is you're going to clutch in and out on the master clutch only, and it's going to measure the pulses in that 400 feet and then do the math. And when you're finished that test, it'll ask you if you want to accept that new value. And if it appears to be a better number, just hit accept and it will start using that new value. Distance check. You can use the calibration window here to check any distance for any reason. So again, you can use the uh, master clutch to trigger uh, on and off for measuring the distance and it's going to actually list it here based on the wheel factor. So in this case, every revolution that it sees is 4.14 feet. So it's just going to do the math and it will display it in both feet and miles. Calibration mode, being stationary or rolling. Uh, typically, we're going to do stationary using the hydraulic calibration system. That way we can do the calibrations without uh, trampling through the field. Rolling can be done, and what that's going to do is allow you to do a typical rolling calibration where you use the master clutch on and off, rather than the stationary type where it disables the master clutch and just uses tank clutches. Display mode being tank or bin. Again, more of an international option where in certain parts of the world, a tank is only for liquid and a bin is for dry product. Show area remaining displays. You can see on the right hand side, or left hand side, 8,702 pounds and 124 acres. That is the calculated area remaining based on that product level. If I deselect that, that value goes away, that 124 acres. Um, it is, should only be used as a reference and typically it's selected, but if it's being used inappropriately, you can deselect that so it doesn't cause any confusion. The blockage tab. Again, blockage is an optional system. So if you do not have blockage sensors on your tillage unit, you're going to select no monitoring. Then it totally ignores any blockage menus or alarms. If you have blockage sensors, we're going to select individual blockage input sensing and it brings up a few more inputs that we have to complete. Monitoring setup, first input is number of monitor ECUs. On the Borgo air kit uh, monitoring systems, we will always only have one monitor ECU. The ECUs for a Topcon system can handle 16 sensors 
and currently that is the maximum we would require for a single shoot sensing system on any Borgo drill. So one ECU will be all that we ever have in here for a value. Number of monitor inputs. This is where we tell it exactly how many sensors to look for through this monitor ECU. So if we go with that full 16, we enter 16 on the display and hit enter. Now, when we go under monitoring list, it's going to show all 16 sensors in a chart. Now you notice you can only see 11 on the list. There's a couple ways to, to view the rest. There's a scroll bar, but you can also go down here and select a different row height. Medium gets a little smaller. Small, you're gonna see all 16 on one page for easy viewing. Now I mentioned earlier that we can actually name each sensor so it's easier to figure out when you get a, a alarm where to go look for a block.